Okay, thank you. Okay, I, I want to just uh, reiterate what uh, Benaj was just uh, telling us, and uh, my presentation is going to be on digital transformation. Uh, I've spent 36 years, <coughs> excuse me, in the field of RCA and reliability, and uh, I'm I'm watching this digital transformation myself, and uh, you know, even like uh, some of you that are not uh, have not participated in it, uh, I didn't know what it was either. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, let me give my views on this. So we, we've been in this business uh, since 1972, so we're coming up on uh, 50 years. Uh, and really our forte in this uh, industry is on root cause analysis. And I know that has a very broad uh, definition of it. And they, uh, you know, it's interpreted the way that people do it themselves. So uh, I want to go through and just give you my rendition as a practitioner of this for so long. Uh, we uh, originally were established in 1972 as a research and development group for a large chemical, uh, global chemical manufacturer. Uh, in 1985, uh, after the uh, founder and director of that group retired, he bought his department out of the corporation. And so we've been really independent since 1985 and been able to take all of those uh, equipment process and human reliability principles that we developed and now we can go ahead and uh, apply them in any industry that we want. Uh, we, at that time is when we developed the PROACT RCA methodology, which I'll be describing to you in this presentation. Uh, we, we don't come to you as somebody who's new into this business. Uh, we've trained tens of thousands of uh, analysts in the field, teams and corporations. So uh, everything that I'm coming through is gonna be field proven. And um, over these years, uh, obviously, when you're reconstructing failure and you're developing these cause and effect relationships uh, that, uh, you know, that, that describe the physical, human, and latent ways in which failure has occurred, we, we've amassed quite a library uh, of these RCA, what I'll call RCA templates. Uh, so we're going to uh, talk about that in this presentation as well, because that's, that's a direct lead into the digital side of artificial intelligence and machine learning is that you know we can we can learn from all of that knowledge in the past so that we don't have to continually do rework of RCA in the future. Uh, we've packaged this all into a, an offering, an agnostic offering that is called Easy RCA, and that's what uh, Sebastian will be uh, addressing towards the end of this presentation. <clears throat> okay, to put this quick into a quick tagline <laughs> to, to really uh, make it concise is that we, we want to help people do more, better, and faster RCAs. Uh, oftentimes uh, there's, a, there's hurdles to doing RCA right. So, you know, we do RCA now instead of doing RCA right, and then we end up doing RCA again. So hopefully the processes that I'm going to go through in here will describe a way of doing RCA right so you don't have to do it again. Okay, other than the sake of name dropping on this, uh, this slide, I want to be able to make a point. As you can see, you're, you're anywhere from chemicals to oil and gas to uh, transportation to healthcare in this slide. And I, I like to think the nature of the business that I'm in is that we're in the critical thinking business that it's not a matter of, uh, I don't really care what undesirable outcome occurs because the same, uh, the same manner in which you're going to think through why that happened and how that happened is, is going to occur in any of these industries. So it really doesn't matter where you apply effective root cause analysis because the, uh, the cause and effect reconstructions and the use of evidence is gonna be the same. Okay, let's talk about this thing called uh, digital transformation. And though I'm qu uh, quoting George Westerman here from uh, MIT, uh, th we're using transformation and, and, and it's by itself <clears throat> as opposed to just digital because the transformations generally have a lot of characteristics being the same. Transformation isn't just a project. It, it isn't a task. <laughs> it isn't a, a, a program. It's a process. It's something that must become part of the organization's being. Uh, that 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 means putting in place a culture so that transformation becomes a natural way of working. 
I, I live in a pretty black and white world in, in the sense of uh, reliability. And uh, my whole world revolves around the transition from a reactive culture to a proactive culture. And uh, every, everything that I do revolves around doing more proactive stuff and less reactive stuff. And there's an inverse relationship to uh, when, when that is happening and uh, when it's used as an effective metric. Okay, what are the three primary elements of a digital transformation? I'm taking this from the Harvard Business Review because it's, it's fitting and appropriate for uh, this particular presentation. Uh, culture, process, and technology, very, very simply put. Okay, let me, let me address culture first because uh, th this remains the biggest challenge to leaders. And I want you to think about when uh, I was talking about the, uh, the basics of the transition from reactive to uh, proactive. And when you look at that, that's a, while, while it's easy to say that, it, uh, mentally it's extremely difficult to shift that paradigm from, uh, from being a better first responder to wondering why we have to respond at all. Because that, that, that has to start from the top. If you think about even today when, when people are, uh, who gets the accolades for, uh, for responding? Uh, you know, you have uh, those reliability people, those ones who prevent uh, unexpected failures. How many people have ever got a letter of accommodation for preventing something? It's, it's a really thankless field when you're in reliability because you're measured by something that doesn't happen. And we, we don't uh, often get accolades for that. that. That's the mental shift that has to happen in this culture. Uh, everything, uh, uh, failure is the enemy of reliability. So when we have failures, uh, that's what upsets the apple cart. And when we iron out the, the uh, when we optimize reliability, that's when these things on the bottom here are going to get better. They're byproducts. Customer loyalty, employee satisfaction, revenue, all, all the KPIs we typ typically watch. When you're reliable, those things will happen. And that's the that's the cultural side of this shift. Okay, then we need a process uh, to follow. And uh, from a digital transformation standpoint, our process that we've developed is called uh, PROACT. And when you look at any basic investigative occupation, uh, the steps of the investigative occupation are the same. In ours, the, the PR of PROACT stands for the preservation of evidence. Uh, any crime scene that you ever watch, any crime TV show, they always start off with roping off the, uh, the, the crime scene. Same thing in, in ours, we're just doing the same thing that uh, uh, criminal investigators do, except we're just doing it in a manufacturing plant and we're not seeking out the who done it. But the investigative process is the same. The O in PROACT stands for the organization uh, of the team, is putting together a team and, and understanding the bias that that team could have. The A in PROACT is the analyzing of that event and being able to reconstruct that failure through cause and effect relationships and using evidence to back up what you say. Uh, the C in there is gonna be communicating our findings and recommendations so that we do something about what we found and we don't just come up with a lot of recommendations that are never done. And just because we go ahead and we come up with a bunch of recommendations doesn't mean that they'll work. So the T in PROACT is kind of closing the loop, and now we got to go ahead and uh, track that whatever we did, something got better. It's not, it's not, you can't call an RCA a success just because you did a bunch of recommendations. Something has to get better on the field. Okay, so the, the digital part of this is what's going to make the, uh, the, the failure, the, this RCA process, uh, be expedited. It's going to be able to be able to pull data from other places and start to help us pre-populate our analysis based on the histories we've had in the past. All right. I, I, want, I do want to go through this slide and uh, just just take me a minute, but it's, it's kind of a premise of uh, the, the, the entire RCA philosophy is that where does failure come from? Failure comes from the our organizational systems. Uh, I've listed a few here, but uh, our policies, procedures, our human performance uh, and human factor systems, how we communicate with each other, the technologies that we implement, how we train people. And lastly, over there, I could say you could have the greatest systems in the world, but if you don't enforce them, that's a different issue. 
So uh, where is the management oversight to make sure that uh, we are implementing the, rec the uh, systems that we have in place? Yeah, we all know. I mean, we all work in systems that are flawed. It's uh, because that, you know, we're human. But when these systems uh, fail, when these systems are flawed and they're deficient in some capacity, we have to understand that they're feeding people information to make decisions. So if I, I can only make as good a decision as the data that I have to make that decision. So now I'm the decision maker. I choose to take an action or I choose not to. Uh, but I trigger a series of physical observations of cause and effect relationships to be seen. Now, you know, because uh, reasoning you can't see. Re reasoning is in your head. But once it comes out of your head, it now is into the public domain and I, and I can see these things. So we have cause and effect relationships that if we don't break this chain, eventually they're going to end up in an undesirable outcome. And usually between these chains and that event, there's gonna be a bunch of, uh, that if we break the chain, it's called a near miss. And then it becomes a choice whether you do an RCA or not. And then oftentimes, since we're so busy, we don't end up doing the RCA because we have other more important things to do. And this, you know, it really didn't happen. But all of those things that allowed that failure to progress that far or that potential failure, the roots are still there. It's gonna happen again, okay? All right, for labeling purposes, uh, we call these systemic things latent root causes. We call the act of decision making a human root cause. And the consequences of that decision we will refer to as physical root causes. Okay, it's just so that we're on the same dictionary. All right, then the technology to make this all come about is going to be the digital side of this. You know, how do I go ahead when I'm saying how can a bearing fail or how can a gear fail? We, we have histories of that. The, the, the physics are there, the, the answers are known, but they may not be at our fingertips. Digital transformation uh, technologies actually put that at your fingertips. Uh, you know, I, there was an economics of reliability report that came out this year from a company called Pinnacle. And uh, their, their, their report, almost to the money here, to the point, uh, said that uh, we, just because you're, uh, you spend a lot on reliability, and I use the word spend, it doesn't mean that you're automatically going to get an, an equivalent boost in productivity and profitability. And this is because they said that two-thirds of the money that we spend on reliability, we waste. We, we like to buy nice, shiny things, but we don't support the technologies that we put in. We don't measure them effectively. We don't set expectations. So there's a whole bunch of reasons of why you can spend a lot of money and it not work. But it wasn't the tool that did that. Uh, the, the same goes for this type of thing, is that we have to make sure that the money we invest in digital technologies is that you know we are a part of making that a success. It doesn't do it by itself. OK, so how does this strategy help? Uh, it evaluates and solves tactical and immediate problems down to their systemic roots. If, if we're only doing reactive RCA, then what we're doing is uh, we have to wait for a trigger to happen, and triggers are really uh, pretty high. Somebody's hurt, there's a, there's a violation of some type, or we've lost a lot of money. Uh, I'm going to advocate to you that RCA on that slide from reactive to proactive is that on the, uh, when we're doing RCAs more proactively, that should be a leading metric for you to know that your, uh, your uh, uh, effort is working because there's no reason that we can't do RCAs on the chronic failures because they're costing you way more than your sporadic failures. And there's also, there's no reason we can't do RCAs on high risks. Um, many of you in your industries, especially oil and gas, high hazard, you're gonna have to do uh, FMEAs. Uh, there's no reason you can't do a Pareto cut of the of FMEA and find out 20% of your failure modes that are causing you 80% of your risk and do an RCA on those high risks. Absolutely no reason you can't apply the same principles of RCA to high risks. Uh, continual improvement of organizational systems. The better that we do these RCAs and identify these latent root causes, the, more, the better we will improve decision making. And then we, uh, that chain doesn't occur. Uh, we only have the successes, we don't have the failures. And then as we're doing this and we're using the creativity and innovation of our workforce, 
we have uh, we're building up this logic, uh, this uh, reservoir and knowledge base of cause and effect logic, so that it's organically building a knowledge base that will end up being applying our artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies today. And that that was my last uh, bullet point here, is that when you're starting to develop these, uh, you have all this logic, you, you got to leverage it. Because think of how many times, and especially if you're a global corporation, that you're solving the same failure over and over again, okay? Because somebody just simply didn't know that you had done it before. So now uh, they have to go ahead and use all the resources to do it again. Okay. All right. And uh, before I hand the baton off here to uh, Sebastian, uh, you know, from a company standpoint of being reliability center, uh, that's our umbrella underneath of that. The PROAC side is that we have a 50-year investment in the name and brand of, of PROAC as a methodology. Uh, but what we're going to uh, uh, go through next with uh, Sebastian is that we've developed an easy RCA uh, solution, which is RCA agnostic. That means that it adapts to any other RCA effort that you, the way that you do RCA but our primary objective is in organizing all of that logic so that we end up with that institutionalized knowledge base and that we're leveraging it to all of our facilities around the world. Okay, so with that, uh, Sebastian, I'm gonna, uh, would you prefer that I stop share and then you just pick it up? Uh, you're on mute too, is uh, Sebastian. You're, you're muted, Sebastian. Sebastian. <laughs> yeah, just gave him the controls. Yeah, thanks so much. I was unable to unmute myself. Well, uh, thank you all for joining. And Bob, thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention to everybody is that uh, any questions you have, feel free to put in the chat. We'll also try to... Um, uh, uh, stop a few minutes early for any questions that you might have. But uh, Bob talked about the three pillars of uh, any digital transformation. Those three pillars, of course, are culture or people, uh, process and technology. And we'd all agree that people are the most important aspect of any digital transformation. But the interesting thing is that uh, a lot of ways to bring a digital transformation is actually in the reverse order. You, you start with a, a technology which drives a process, and as your people do that, uh, you're, you're actually training them to do things differently. And so what we wanted to do today was show you a technology that our company has developed, which we think begins a process of digital transformation for an organization. And that's called Sebastian, EZRC. Sebastian, Sebastian, did you want control of the slides? Um, yeah, I'm actually going to dive straight into the demo, Bob. Okay, but I mean, do you want to share your screen? I will, but not right now. I, I can do it. Okay. I can I can share. Yeah, okay. I can grab right. that. Sorry. Um, um, so yeah, so I appreciate that. So yeah, so let's go ahead and, and talk about a technology which can lead to, um, can assist in digital uh, transformation. It's called EZRCA, and we've seen it to be a very effective in, in helping people bring uh, technical change. So this is a platform. And as Bob said, it has all the hall hallmarks that you want in any digital transformation. And this is specifically around RCAs. Um, uh, let me walk you through how it works. And you can see how all the elements of, of people and training and process and having a good workflow and technology come together. So here's the opening screen for Easy RCA. And it's a, it's a simple way. You can see all listed down here are all the different RCAs that are being worked on, including the, the phase that they're in, so that you can see uh, what, what phase of the work uh, you're, you're working on. Um, and you can actually you know, uh, view your analyses just by clicking on them. This is a, a large transformer. Uh, you can see all the, the different aspects of an RCA laid out here in a very organized, visual way. Um, uh, what, what this software does is it makes it very easy for any analyst to create this, and then very easy for any manager 
to be reviewing, are they following the steps in the process and what do I need to do to encourage them to do things differently? So how do you, how do you go ahead and build uh, an RCA in this? Well, there's a, there's a simple wizard. You click the, the wizard button and uh, you're given an option to, to select the probability. Again, you'll, you'll see just in doing something as simple as this, you're, you're training people and how to think differently and how to think about the cost of different failures, uh, as Bob mentioned. It's gonna recommend to you a particular approach to doing an RCA based on this risk metric uh, matrix and where something falls on that. In this case, it's recommending a PROACT methodology. You can also select a fishbone or five Ys. Uh, next step is simple. I just title it. Uh, we'll call this a pump failure. Um, uh, as Bob mentioned, I, I have the ability to choose from templates or knowledge from my organization. So this is kind of saved knowledge from across the organization. So, so not only again, are, am I doing an original analysis here, but I have the ability to link to all the other work that others in my organization have done. In this case, I'll, I won't select one. I'll pick a location for that, uh, a particular piece of equipment that failed I can label, uh, and then write a description uh, for that um, uh, failure. I'm able to say when that analysis starts, select a date when I wanna finish it, uh, label when the event took place, um, and even, even label, of course, the time. So, so we're really getting a sense of, of when this event happened. And then finally, and, and I think really importantly, uh, RCAs are really any continuous improvement process or any problem solving process in an organization should really be a collaborative event uh, it shouldn't be just me sitting at my desk thinking on, on my own, but really, who else can I bring into this who can add value? And so in a very simple way, this, this software allows for collaboration. Uh, I can share it with anybody. I can, um, I can share it across the entire organization if I want, or I can just share it with particular people. In this case, I'm going to work on this with Bob, and so I'm going to share it with him. And so both Bob and I can work on this and then I launch analysis. One of the things we wanted to do when we created this product, because we know that you never want software to get in the way of people solving problems. And, the, and, and some of the most fruitful problem solving, as we interviewed many people, was done around a whiteboard with sticky notes, right? Putting notes up on a board and really thinking creatively. And so we wanted this to be very similar to that. So you can see there's a white background and a little box that looks like a sticky note. I can highlight that and very easily uh, inside that box, I can label what my event is and, and what went wrong. And you can see I can drag this around and move it around. Um, again, a methodology, you want, you want some sort of a, uh, uh, a framework for that. And so uh, for us, I'm gonna add a, a failure mode. So why might a pump fail? Let's say there's a seal leak and a, and a bearing failure. Um, I can quickly add those and you can see how easy it is to add to this. Again, we want the problem solving of people to be the most important thing and the technology really supporting that. We don't want the technology to be something that is complicated and, and even to make it easy, you know, you can see these little tool tips on top. So all I have to do is highlight it and at any time I'm reminded what they mean and what I can do. So if I've identified a bearing failure, I now want to think through what are hypotheses. Why may that bearing have failed? It might be because of erosion. It might be because of corrosion. It might be because of overload. And it may be uh, fatigue, let's say. Those are the uh, four ways a bearing might fail. And in any, as, as Bob mentioned, in any investigative process, I want data. I want to be able to verify whether or not a failure occurred for this reason. So for erosion, you know, let, let's say we, we, we verify it and we say it's not a reason. Corrosion, we verify it, or sorry, we say it's not true. Uh, overload, we leave and fatigue, we, we say was a, a cause of, uh, of why our bearing failed. You can see a really nice visual language coming together here where I go from a pump failure to a seal leak and then 
visually it shows me my level of certainty in these different hypotheses. Okay. Well, well, not only do we want to make sure there's a process where we're brainstorming, but we also want data, right? We want to make sure we're being thoughtful and attaching data. And so in any one of these, um, uh, any one of these boxes, I want to be able to um, add information to it. So for example, I might want to assign a task on fatigue. I might say, Bob, please take a photo of the pump, right? So that might be a, that might be a task. I want to verify it. And again, I want Bob to be the one to do that. And I'd like him to complete that task within a week. And so when I hit add task right here, Bob gets an email notifying him of this, uh, of this task with a due date. He'll be reminded via email of that due date and then it's logged in my system so I know whether or not it's done or not, okay? I also wanna be able to attach files. Uh, and, and so I can very simply um, select a file that I wanna upload. Um, in this case, I wanna upload an image. I can upload images, I can upload videos, documents, you name it, but I'm attaching that as evidence to this particular uh, hypothesis. And then finally notes. Uh, so in this case, I might wanna comment and say, we debated fatigue. But what you're seeing here is, again, the merging of all the elements of digital transformation, people being involved, a process being followed and technology supporting it all. Okay, so I've added different elements and you can see there's a little paper clip here indicating that uh, there's information attached to this particular box. One other element of the software, as Bob mentioned, is in any transformational process, you wanna make sure you're leveraging learnings from the past. That work that has been done prior to this event has been captured by your organization and can be brought to bear for this particular event. And so when I highlight this, this box fatigue, this little orange brain appears. And if I click on it, this is the template library that Bob mentioned. And I am suddenly able to select other reasons why there may have been a failure, all based on different learnings from the past. And you can see when I clicked on those links, my tree got much bigger. And it's because uh, I was able to, to go back into a database of past failures and see other reasons why there may have been fatigue. For example, one of the reasons is misalignment. So I'm suddenly given misalignment as a potential uh, reason for fatigue. And I can label that as Bob mentioned, I can say that that I believe was a physical root problem of the fatigue that occurred. And I think that there was uh, misalignment because it was installed incorrectly, which was a human root of the, the reason. And even building on that, I might say that there was improper installation because of a lack of training. And we'll say that that was a systemic root. And so of course, in any root cause process, I want to close the loop and recommend a corrective action. And so I might wanna add that and say, um, uh, improve training. And we're gonna call that a corrective action. And so you can see our, our uh, technology, our, our process and our people all came together and this technology and being able to leverage uh, insights from the past and able to quickly brainstorm and build out a tree and able to verify analysis and go through all of this, this process. Um, of course, I, there's some other things I can do. I can um, I can attach this, uh, you know, I can say improve training procedures. And we can, uh, we can say that that's a, um, a corrective action. 
and we're going to hold Bob accountable for that. And we'll, we'll ask him to finish that in a week. And so we've now added a corrective action so that that gets done. So that's, that is how this all comes together. But we know that if you want to see culture change, again, you need to be able to permeate an organization with your learnings and with the work that you're doing. And so one of the ways we do that, as I mentioned, is we make it easy to share. Um, so I'm actually going to copy this link in the, the, the chat box with you. And you'll see that every single person on this Zoom call now has, uh, can pull up this analysis on their cell phone, on a tablet, or in a browser. And you can be looking at the exact same thing that I'm creating. And so I can actually share with you uh, my work and the work that I'm doing. So that's one way it can be shared. Another way it can simply be shared is I can, uh, I can download a report and immediately I can get access to this report that I've created. Um, minimize these. Uh, I can get access to this report. And again, in one click, I can share a report uh, with, with people in the organization. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to show you that right now. It's a Word document, but I can download that report very easily and, uh, and share that organization-wide. Okay. And then finally, uh, we know that, um, uh, you know, just, just some small things to show. You can, you can, you know, some people like to read left to right. And so you can organize this tree left to right. You can, you can move these boxes around. You know, you can decide, actually, I want it top down again. And so you can change that uh, and, and you can make that happen. So there's, there's lots of flexibility here. Um, in addition, as we mentioned, it's possible to not only do a, a logic tree, but also a fishbone analysis. Uh, and it's even possible to, uh, to do a five whys. So to very easily create different types of processes for your people to follow or different methodologies uh, are important. But as I mentioned, our tool is, uh, this tool is, is important, but if you truly wanna see culture change, managers also need to be able to uh, not only hold people accountable, but also learn from the information that, that folks are generating. And so there's a few tools that we've built in to help managers. My favorite is this search bar that can search through every single RCA that's ever been done uh, so that you can learn from them. So in this search bar, you can type in, for example, a piece of equipment, a pump. You can see I do a lot of pumps. <laughs> so I can see all the different analyses that related to a pump. Or I can think, okay, I wanna see all the corrective actions uh, that have been put into the system. And so I can do a search for corrective actions and see all the different corrective actions. I may even want to see any time a, a root cause analysis was done and COVID was somehow connected to it. And so I can do that and immediately go to a, an analysis that mentions COVID. Uh, so you can see there's a lot of power built in there um, uh, for how I do that. Let me refresh this. Um, as well as a dashboard, uh, so as a manager, I can see all the different tasks that have been assigned, which ones are still due to be complete and when they're complete and who, who needs to do them, which tasks are overdue. So they've, they've, they should have been done already, but they're not. Which tasks have been completed so we can celebrate them. I can even see all the activity across my team for anything that they're doing. Uh, as well, I can see a graphical interface showing me uh, highest cost RCAs, for example, and which ones I should focus my attention on. Um, uh, different, uh, uh, different hypotheses and, and how those work, as well as um, uh, different, different um, nodes. So that's, that is one tool. We think it's the best tool for doing RCAs, and we think it's the best tool. It's a great tool for bringing uh, cultural change to your organization. Um, and so we think it's a, it's a great tool to use, uh, and, and we, you know, recommend that. 
Bob, my, my screen. Okay. There it is. Uh, is, is suddenly having a hard time. Um, but if you, Bob, if you want to go ahead and take over. I, I can see your screen. Okay, good. I was going to say, if you wanted to take over that control. Um, so yeah, that's, that is, uh, wanted to conclude. Um, uh, yeah, just conclude by, by, um, uh, by saying, you know, as we mentioned, not, not only is, is this process, um, not only is, is the process a technical one, it's also a, a people process. And so using our solution, we, we've also seen that providing onboarding and kind of a five steps to success over the first 30 days is a very helpful way of bringing a team along so that the entire team can uh, can also uh, get on board and can can work together uh, and learning how to use a software product, but also following a process so that, again, your culture can be shaped to become a problem solving and a proactive problem solving culture. Uh, so let's pause there. Let's go and see if there's any last questions. We want to make sure that we're, uh, we're available to you all for any questions you might have. Um, Bob, in, in the work he did in talking about cultural uh, and digital transformation, and just any questions about a particular way you can do that by using EasyRCA. I want to see if there's any comments or questions uh, that you all might have. Any questions from the audience? All right. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sebastian Traeger, uh, who's the chairman and managing oh, director of Reliability Center Incorporated, um, as well as Mr. Someone, Latino. Yeah, go ahead. Someone, yeah, someone did just ask a question, so I want to, if it's okay, can I answer it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the question was, can you upload data within the analysis? And the answer is yes, you can uh, very easily. Um, um, going to the analysis itself. You, you click any box, or you can always go to the entire analysis itself and, and you can attach any files to that. And so you can very easily, um, again, select the analysis and then very easily upload any file that you would like so that you can attach data. So it's very easy to attach data uh, to, to this analysis that you're working on. Um, then somebody asked, how do you track repeat failures? Uh, Bob, why don't you, you answer that question, either indirectly. Um, uh, you see that question in the chat box? Yeah, I mean, that, that's to me, that's a, a leading metric uh, be, to be able to see if they're uh, occurring more than once, because obviously you're going in the wrong direction. And it defeats the purpose of having the technology if you uh, are doing the same thing over and over again. So you, you could be able to do a search on this whole database and be able to see if you're doing analyses based on the, on the same ones over and over. Uh, especially, it, it's more glaringly uh, obvious when you have different sites from around the world attached to it, because they're the ones who mostly, uh, most likely don't uh, know what's been done elsewhere. So the, the answer to that is yes. Not only yes can it be done, but, uh, and it should be done, but uh, that it's as a leading metric, uh, I encourage people to do that from the uh, management infrastructure standpoint uh, that, you know, it's the whole purpose of doing it in a, a single knowledge management database is that you're not having to do the same thing over and over again. So that, that was a great question and a good insight. Uh uh, I, and I, I went ahead and just put my email in the chat box. If you'd like to look at the software and um, uh, I'm going to put in Bob's email address at, um, as well. If you'd like to talk to him about a developing a digital strategy for your organization. Um, Uh, that was a good. I'm gonna just hit on that question again about uh, doing RCAs over because I'm reading his comp his question now. 
the uh, if, if I had to do an RCA over again, one of my root causes in the second RCA would be would be a call out as to why the first one didn't work. So uh, I, I encourage that too because they had to be either deficient in some capacity, not not comprehensive enough, or we didn't uh, uh, implement the recommendations that we said, or they weren't effective. So uh, that, I think that that's a uh, that's critical to not having to do the rework. Is uh, if you do it right the first time, you don't end up doing it again.